Hello, awesome teachers. Or perhaps not feeling that awesome today. Anyway, in today's video, I'd like to share four things I did and still do with my ESL students to make their classes awesome and their English perfect. Let me show you. Number one is using GIFs. Whenever there is a picture students need to see, I always go with GIFs rather than the regular pictures because A. They get a chance to fully grasp the meaning of the word they're intended to learn and B. They'll always link the GIF with the word and remember its meaning in both their native language and English. When I show them this GIF, for example, students obviously know what it means in their native language. Now my job, or the GIF job, is to try to link that meaning to its English equivalent. Students always come and tell me, especially after they've taken a test or a quiz, that they remember the word or the meaning of it because of the GIF. Hearing that melts my heart every single time. Moving to C, students will think you're cool, you're using something that their generation sees and posts all the time, and you'll start having this bond and understanding between you and them. Yes, despite the age gap. Okay, I'm gonna give you some examples of how to add and use GIFs in ESL learning or any learning, really. Finding the right GIF isn't difficult. It's either you go to Google and type, for example, Angry GIF and pick one of these and download it. Or you can go to unclejeffy.com and search there. Personally, I use PowerPoint to view my GIFs and add the words or sentences related to that GIF. And here are some examples. You can use GIFs to teach new words or to revise old words. Number two is homework. I know, you're like, what the hell is wrong with her? But allow me to explain. When we give students assignments, come on, let's just put it out. They're boring and students are never excited to do them. So I thought, how can I make students really practice English at home and get really excited for homework? Since everything is moving online nowadays, I found a couple of amazing ESL websites that have millions of ESL games. Students can play at home, have fun, and at the same time, practice some English skills. I'll share some. First, you got games to learn English. If you're targeting a certain topic, you'll have a variety of games. And if you want your students to revise grammar, they got a bunch of great games for that. Next to the bookcase turtles are slower than rabbits let's say i want their game aka homework to focus on conditional f so i found this game i send the link to the students and to make sure they did it i ask them to screenshot their score or in other games they'll have a timer or something like that Another great website is ESL Games Plus. You can browse your homework by game style and search for what suits your lesson best. The last website is for advanced students and the games on this website are the coolest. The games are provided with sound so students get to practice pronunciation and listening besides the targeted vocabulary or grammar. And they're so creative, so out of the box, so fun to play. Ready to play with a henchman while Dr. Two Brains is away? 
Tap the screen to aim the cheese ray. Then tap again to shoot. Try to. Just make sure to prepare and make your game hunting before the class time. Number three is one of my favorites. Let's say you're teaching a unit all about clothes vocabulary. I ask the students to put on their favorite piece of a clothes for next to class and give a little presentation about it. Or if my lesson is about food, I'll ask them to bring their favorite candy or their favorite bar of chocolate and talk about it. If you have one of these rigid lessons, you can always have time out and talk about something else. For example, I was supposed to teach a lesson about bioprinting for next class and I know how hard this lesson would be so I ask the students in advance to bring the most precious gift they've ever received so after I finished explaining that lesson I was like okay time out show me your gifts and while the students were talking I tried to apply what we learned on their items so for example one of the students brought a leather bag and I explained how leather can be bioprinted nowadays and students started you know thinking about it and and trying to relate what they learned with the items. Also, students kind of get more confident having their things with them, talking about it in the front of the class. And to help them out in these mini presentations, I always tell them to answer what, where, how, when, why, how long, etc. I don't have a name for this entire activity, but for every class, the students and I try to come up with one. For one group, I called it the bring it out time, and for another one, I named it the time to inspect, and I told them to put their detective masks on. I mean, I'm pretty sure you're creative enough to come up with a name because this activity is gonna be a thing that you and your students will be doing the entire course. That's a pretty uh, follow teachers. I hope, like really hope, these tips were useful or at least got you inspired in a way or another. Thank you for being an awesome, hardworking teacher.